Hey, 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 hey. I'm not ready. Hey, hey. She wasn't ready. Hey, hey, hey. Here we are, Rick and Kristen, back with another fringy episode for you on Easter. Easter? That's right. It's Easter, guys. I think it's Resurrection Day. Is it Resurrection Day or is it Ishtar? Oh, it could be all of those oh. things. A lot of controversy about Easter this year. There really is. It's a complicated subject yeah. because people are kind of waking up and they're like, okay, if uh, you're telling us to be truthful about everything that we're doing and, and you know, reading the Bible the way that we should, is it kind of weird that we're doing these pagan customs? Right. What say you about that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I see both sides. Does this mean I've, I've matured and I see both sides? I think so. I think when I you... definitely, I definitely think that it goes back to kind of the condition of the heart mm. is, is what I think all these things come back to. If you're focusing on Easter bunnies and Easter eggs and all of that kind of stuff, then I think you should probably reevaluate. But yeah, if I mean... you're celebrating the resurrection of, Christ, mm -hmm. then I think that is, we should be doing that every day. Yeah, it's I think, kind of like Mother's Day and Father's Day. Why do we celebrate we, Mother's Day and Father's Day when we should be celebrating them every day? It is just another day. Right. But people get hung up on the semantics of Easter or whatever you want to call it. And and that that is then detracting from the the spirit of the holiday or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. yeah because i mean it's very easy to make a case for the fact that this is you know a, a pagan ritual mm -hmm. i mean I, i've mentioned a book on the podcast in the past called pagan christianity where you know this guy makes a very good case that that you know, it is a very pagan mm -hmm. uh, background. i mean all of our holidays are really <clears throat> exactly and that's what we have to realize is we know that we've been lied to. We know that we're off. You know, this year they're celebrating Easter today, but the Passover is not until like the 22nd of April. Right. And so a lot of people are saying, well, there's this huge disconnect between Passover and Easter, and it's supposed to be this resurrection is supposed mm -hmm. to be at the time of the Passover which is super confusing to people, right? But it just goes to show you how far away we've gotten from the original timeline, but that doesn't change the, and I think this is the point you're trying to make, and I would agree with you, is we're not getting rid of the, we're not getting rid of the intent of the heart, I guess right. is, is what you're getting at. And that, I think that's really the bottom line is what's the intent of your heart when you're coming into this, um, whether it's going to church or, you know, having a small group together with your family or even just getting together and not even going to church and just having time together as mm -hmm. community. I think that's all good stuff, you know? Right. Right. And I, I just, I guess I, I, I don't feel like God's going to be like, oh, you celebrated Easter on the mm. wrong day and we're going to get smite, smited, smote, whatever, because we celebrated Smitten. it on Easter. I think it's, I think, and I, and I feel like a lot of this stuff is just designed to be divisive, I guess, is the long and short of my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's I another think, thing to argue about, and, and it's why we have thousands of different denominations within the mm -hmm. Christian church, because it's another thing to argue about. And what we should be focusing on is Sunday is coming. The yeah. resurrection is coming. You know, he... The what behind it, yeah. Right. It's it's the... Because obviously, if you look at it even just from a mathematical standpoint, if mm -hmm. he's crucified on on Good Friday, well... Sunday is only two days from Friday, so he couldn't have been in the grave three days. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make sense in in that regard. But yeah. I think I think it that that's just numbers. Like it, it's it's. I, yeah, think I think what we should be doing is celebrating the fact that he rose from the dead and how like amazing that is, and mm -hmm. and all the, all of the other things that happened. You know, if you go into what he did during those three days and you know all of that stuff it's like it's a pretty uh, incredible 
thing. So let's focus on that and call it what you want or call it nothing or don't celebrate it. It doesn't really matter because it, it it's a condition of your heart. We mm-hmm. stand before God individually, not as a collective group. Mm-hmm. So however you feel like it's best and, and right to celebrate Easter or not celebrate Easter, then do that. Because yeah. God's put a conviction on your heart in one way or another. So that's yeah, and I I'll, think I'll get off my soapbox now. No, it's good. I think it's it's interesting that people get so worked up about certain things, you know, when you get so angry. And and we're getting a lot of um, questions about our last episode, right? And, and we wanted to talk a little bit about this on this episode because you get these type of questions where people are um, almost taken back and baffled that we would even have an episode that would talk about these crazy things. And, mm-hmm. and I think that that's really telling to how far people are willing to go. Right. And, and, and when we say we're going to have conversations and we're going to have people on here and we're going to get fringy, like that's what we mean. Mm-hmm. We're not joking. Well, and around. we have people on, if you've listened to us from the beginning, we have had people on we don't agree with 100 percent of what everybody says Mm -hmm. but we're giving people a platform to tell what they believe in and then and then again individually using your discernment and and what god has given you the gifts that god has given you to decide whether you believe that stuff or not or Mm -hmm. you know it's it's really just getting the information out there i i feel like and and i you know, we try to be really, you know, aware of if something is very overtly demonic or somebody's really off in the weeds where it, you know, sometimes there have been things we've trimmed out of episodes because it didn't, you know, or they maybe they went a little too far in their description of things. Like we had Zachary King, who was the mm-hmm. um, high wizard in this in the church of Satan. And he, he really got very uh, descriptive yeah. in some of the stuff. And so we just didn't feel like it was right to put some of that stuff out. Um, but it, again, it's just letting people talk. Like we mm-hmm. shouldn't be afraid to talk and listen. And we don't have to agree with somebody a hundred percent of the time. There's a lot of things that me and Rick don't agree about, believe it or not, that, we are able to listen to each other and go, okay, I can see what you're saying there, but you know, I kind of tend to lean this way or, Mm. you know, Rick tends to want to go off into the weeds and I tend to want to stay on the road. And, you know, there's, there's a balance. I think that's what gives us balance as a community is having conversation and then taking from it what you will. Mm -hmm. Also, we should probably let people know that we're not, doing a regular episode today because it's Easter and we had a really weird (laughs) last weekend and week. Yeah. So we ended up stranded in Kennewick, Washington of all places. And our car is now in Idaho (laughs) and we had to, (laughs) who knew it was going to be so hard to find a rental car in Kennewick to get back home uh-huh. So we had a bit of a, a bit of a weekend and then Rick was out of town for work for three days. And so uh, we've had a bit of a week. So what yeah. we're going to kind of lean towards is some current events that I think, I think Rick has a lot of good insight and things to be like, to keep in the back of your mind about maybe some of the stuff that's going on right now. Some of the weirdness. Because, yeah, it, uh, you know, while we're celebrating Resurrection Sunday and the awesomeness of that, we can't forget that the world is crazy. It's, mm-hmm. you know, that saying where you can put red ants and black ants in the same jar and they, they're fine. They get along just fine until somebody shakes up the jar and then they start fighting and killing each other. Well, this world is getting shaken up. And so there's a lot of, I think, just fear, maybe anxiety. A lot. There's just a lot of, like, you can feel it. You can feel a shift in things and we've been saying that for a while but my my biggest question for you is what is going on with this whole eclipse i know there's a lot of stuff that's going along with it Mm -hmm. but why on god's green earth would they be canceling school and telling people to stock up on 
food and water and all like what is going on it's an eclipse it's yeah. like they're like well we don't want people to be driving and during the eclipse because it's going to get dark i'm like uh, cars have headlights yeah. i mean people drive in the dark all the time like what what's going on rick spill it well the you know you're seeing lots of different things about this eclipse and we've been you know, people have not really been paying this much attention to the eclipse since like 2017. That's when the eclipse was really kind of ramping up as being something mm -hmm. that people really were paying attention to. But they've been happening for, you know, thousands and thousands of years. It's not like eclipses are new things. And they have lunar eclipses and solar eclipses, total eclipses, annular eclipses. There's all of these different types that they have. And so this one that's coming up is going to be, uh, you know, a total uh, where the, the solar eclipse is uh, where the sun is going to be blotted out for, I think it's about three minutes. It depends on where you're at in the world. It's like where. three to six minutes or something. And so it's going to be traveling in a very, you know, weird pattern, right? Because in 2017, right. we had the, the eclipse back then that everybody was talking about. Which and basically came right over us because we're in Oregon. So yeah. it, it, it basically, that was, and it was very cool to watch. But yeah, people yeah, rented traversed. like RVs and there was like farmers that rented out their whole field for people to come. Like, I mean, it was an event. It wasn't yeah, people were going camping and just getting yeah. in spots where they could just see the eclipse really well. It was it was a big thing that was going on. And then it was, you know, right after that, we got locked down and we went into it was weird that right after this eclipse happened in 2017, there was so much weirdness that began to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you think timeline wise, all of this stuff started happening, all of the uh, people started waking up. COVID happened. Right. And we had a lot of um, people being kind of jarred awake by the extremes uh, of well we had the whole election debacle yeah 2020 debacle election and and even 2016 election 2016, was a big yeah. deal you know um so y you could see this timeline kind of aligning to the eclipse and the thing that's interesting about eclipses that we should probably pay attention to is the fact that they're a they're signs from God, right? These are signs in the heavens from God about times and seasons and all of those different things that, mm -hmm. that the Bible says those celestial bodies in the sky are for, right? And so as we observe them or as the ancient people observe them, they would begin to notice certain patterns and certain things and they would begin to tell that things were coming or they knew when to plant and when to harvest and all of those mm -hmm. things. And so the thing about these eclipses is you, this is a message in the sky that nobody can control right? They can't control these celestial bodies in the sky because right. God put them in motion and they do what they do and they don't stop doing what they're doing. And, and no matter what you try to do to them, they're not going to stop doing what they're doing. God put them in motion until he says to stop. And there has been times in the Bible where he stopped the sun from moving. Um, and so that's kind of the idea of it being in motion all the time. So if something happens to where they line up or they're showing you something in the sky, that would probably be a direct message from God about something, right? And so a lot of people have now begun to do research online and figure out that you've got this long list of um, eclipses that have happened throughout the year or throughout the thousands of years. And they're on these repetitive patterns, right? These things happen repetitively. So we are seeing that, yes, these celestial bodies are timed. And so it's very interesting when you have this one that happened in 2017, and then you're going to have this one coming up in 2024. And it's, it it's, seems close together. To it's me. like a beginning of a cycle and an ending of a cycle, okay. if that makes sense. And that's what a lot of people are starting to put together. It's also drawing very interesting lines for those of you that haven't seen this online yet. Uh, it's drawing these very specific lines. Um, this eclipse is going to be going through several uh, cities that are all named Nineveh, which is. I didn't even honestly know that there was a city. 
in the United States called Nineveh. Yeah, I didn't either. I, and I mean, seven of them that just this eclipse is going through. Yeah, it's a bunch, and it, and so that's a very interesting number, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's going to go through seven Ninevehs, which if you go back to the Bible, we're talking about judgment, right? Because that's what that's what he was supposed to take. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Jonah was supposed to take the message to the people of Nineveh that God was going to destroy them if they didn't repent, and they did at the last minute, and he saved them or he spared them, and that's actually what mm-hmm. sent. Uh, Jonah into his little, you know, pity party fit because he was mad that they saved, uh, that God, God uh, spared them because they were a terrible people. They were just a terrible people. And so this is kind of that beginning and end of a cycle. And so a lot of people are wondering what is the end of this cycle going to look like? Mm-hmm. And so they started going back into time and looking at different times that this type of a beginning and end cycle has happened where you have a, a lunar eclipse on one end and a solar eclipse on the other end. And they went back to 1811. By 1811, they had a very similar situation that happened in the United States, and they actually had a series of earthquakes that went through the United States. So when you're saying that people are being told to stay home and not go to school and to prepare for, you know, food and water and all these things. And that they're actually like, you know, governors are, are are calling up the national guard Mm -hmm. for, for this time. It's like, what do they know that we don't know? Because it seems silly to do all of that just for an eclipse. It is a lot. Right. And I've seen like uh, online, you've seen people like filming with their cell phone parking lots full of um, buses and uh, basically like resources for natural disasters. And so this is all very interesting, right? Because why would you have all of this stuff? put together for an eclipse that we've seen happen many, many times. I mean, Mm -hmm. thousands of years we've been having eclipses. They come and go. It's supposed to last three minutes. We're calling up the National Guard for three to six minutes of, of, you know, no sunlight. And so that's one very kind of interesting thing is, is the patterns, the pattern of it, the cities that it's rolling through. And people are also noticing that it's, it's making the two Hebrew, Um, I think it's the Av and the Tav or something like that. Um, anyway, you can see a lot of this online if you do research into it, but I don't put a lot of energy into all of that stuff. What I like to put energy into is what's matching up to the timing of what's going on. And so there are a few other things that are going on at the same time. So if you go to NASA's website, you'll find that they're actually going to be launching three rockets uh towards the sun at the exact same time that this eclipse is happening and the official narrative goes that they want to uh they basically want to see what the ionosphere is doing um during this eclipse because they're thinking when you know stuff happens up there in the ionosphere during this eclipse they could get some research they they could get some information some data on what's going on up there but the interesting thing about it is why would you shoot rockets at the sun to gather information during an eclipse and some people are like well it's just a very convenient time you know because you this is the only time that you can get this data is when this is happening so this is the reason for the timing it's nothing nefarious or nothing weird it's just this is the best time for it and that could be true however um you lost me at nasa you know Mm -hmm. the people that lie to us all the time about everything and so If I can't trust them about anything else, you know, because they're lying about space, they're lying about space walks, they're doing it in the water, you've seen videos of bubbles, you've seen videos of wires and all kinds of CGI mishaps. I mean, if you haven't seen these things, get on YouTube, you can find them. These are all discrepancies that they've done over the years. And so if NASA is lying, and that's been pretty well proven that they have, um, What are they lying about now? They're telling us that they're doing something, but what are they really doing? 
And and it's very so interesting. So what do you think they're really doing? You think I'm not they're trying sure. to you think they're trying to find a a hole in the firmament that they think do you think that when the eclipses line up, they think that that's a way to get out? Like I don't know. Some people have speculated that they're trying to shoot at the firmament, but they've already done that. You know what I mean? They've already mm-hmm. they've already tried that and and failed back in the day. And so I don't know why they would do that now unless they think that there's some sort of correlation between the sun and the strength of the firmament. And maybe they think at low strength during an eclipse, it would be the best time to hit the firmament. Mm -hmm. That's all speculation. I don't know. know. But maybe that would be the case. Here's Um, my concern with some of the other stuff is I'm just going to read this. I didn't read the whole article because I just wanted I wanted to. See what you thought. Okay. It says CERN to test world's most powerful particle accelerator during April solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Mm-hmm. Does that sound like the ether or like something else that we already know exists? Like what? What yeah. are they? What are they really doing? I mean, I don't know. It just CERN is a very weird. Place, phenomena, whatever. Yeah. Well, the official information about CERN is that about two years ago, they discovered what they call the God particle, which they basically take this hydron collider with, they take these particles and they spin them in, in circles really, really fast. And then they slam them into each other. And when they do that, it, it causes this moments of explosion. And, and, and when they're doing this, I don't know exactly how it works because I would get paid what they get paid. Mm. but I don't. That would be nice. Yeah. And so as they're slamming them together, somehow they found that there is this one particle that stood out from the others, but it was super unstable and it, it, it had so much almost, you know, infinite power within it that they were like, okay, this is like the God particle. This is like the beginning of of all other things. It's almost like they broke the particles down to its base zero level Mm -hmm. and they got this particle this be that's why they would call it a god particle because that would be like the beginning of all other particles but as i said it's pretty unstable and it quickly devolves into other particles so it's there they can't do anything with it so they can't harness it they can't harness it because realistically that's what they're trying to do is harness this Mm -hmm. energy for whatever reason, but they're, yeah. they're trying to control this energy that they're finding. Well, and they're also trying to find what's called that dark matter. You know, uh, mm. you, you heard, maybe heard of dark matter. It's, it's basically, is this like the Spider-Man movie? Well, he kind of, no, it's, it's like the gooey drippy black <sighs> stuff that like takes, turns them into a bad, of the bad Spider-Man. No, unfortunately oh. it's not like that, but it's, they basically think that it's what makes like black holes and stuff like that. It, it's, it's very astrological. Like there's a lot of, of, of dark matter in space, which is basically like nothingness right but it but it's energy and so they're thinking that all of this energy is this dark matter but they don't know how how it works or where it comes from but the problem is is it doesn't exist it's ether right and so they're they're they must be doing something else because they already know about ether Right. And and they already know about all of that. This dark matter stuff, that's all BS. It doesn't exist. It's all ether. They're trying to throw us off by calling it different things. When they say space and dark matter and all of this, they change everything light to dark, right? Ether is all about mm-hmm. light. It's the medium for light. And so what they're calling it now is dark matter. And what a lot of people think that they're doing at CERN is really trying to open up a portal or, or, or raise, um, some, some sort of a demon or, or summon Satan himself or whatever. I don't know if that's really or the they're case. they're trying to, they're trying to figure out how to release things from like Sheol or whatever. They're trying mm-hmm. to summon things before their time yeah. kind of a thing. 
So nobody really knows why, again, they're shooting rockets at it, but we also don't know why they're after two years of, you know, finding the God particle and then taking two years off to reconfigure and reconstruct and get set up for this next set of experiments that they're going to be doing. It just so happens that the eighth of April during the eclipse is when they've decided to start back up the white rabbit hydron collider. What do you, what do you think is the significance of that? Like why would they be shooting rockets and trying to open up CERN again during that time? Like, are these all connected? Are they all trying to, are they trying to do the same thing like through different means yeah it's really hard to say because you can speculate all day long right? right but you can go back to the news and and think about when they were talking about blotting out the sun because of global warming right that wasn't that long well, ago trails that they spray so that we aren't getting right. the vitamin d that we should be they're always talking about like protecting us from the sun but then they mm -hmm. worship the sun and so it's like this weird dichotomy because if you know what satanism is it's really like a, a mixture of paganism and and um sun worship right. you know right. a lot of the a lot of the deities back in the day were you know they were they were worshiping the sun because that's where they thought all of their energy and all well, of their yeah. life force I mean, and everything came from right and so these Satanists are basically doing the same thing. They're, they're worshiping the sun mm -hmm. and they're, and, and, and they're basically taking on these same religious ideologies from the past and continuing those on. So who knows what kind of a secret meeting, if it is the bad guy. So this is the other thing. Are we talking about who's in charge right now? You know, who's really in charge other than God? I mean, of the planet. Um, who's running things? A lot of people would say you've got good guys and bad guys, and you've got the cabal, right? These people that are coming out in the news right now, like the P. Diddy's and the mm. Jay Z's, and the yeah, I mean, they're saying that P. Diddy is basically the Epstein of, of rap music, and that he was the guy that was doing everything that Epstein was doing, um, but he was just doing it for the music industry mm -hmm. in, a, in, in a different way. And so what Epstein was doing was very similar. So we're talking cameras in planes, cameras in, in rooms, in all of his places, the music industry throwing these big parties, sponsoring these big parties, um, and then honeypotting and, and catching all these people in lewd activities, whether it be sacrifices or underage children or whatever, they catch them in these compromising positions and now they own them, right? It's a, blackmail that's a blackmail game that they play and so the, the understanding of this lawsuit that just came out is that diddy was kind of one of the kingpins of setting all of this stuff up a lot of how epstein did you know and i think very soon we're going to start to see some other names i think more names are going to keep coming out we've already seen like td jakes has been named which i'm not surprised because you know look at the guy He's he's a name it and claim it guy, right? Mm -hmm. If he's all about the money and he's all about the fame and he's all about all that stuff and driving nice cars, you could probably lump in like Kenneth Copeland and all of these like Joel Olsteins, all these dudes that have all the money and the mega churches and stuff like that. They're probably working for the bad guys, you know, yeah. so don't be surprised if you guys start seeing these type of names in the news. You know, don't be surprised if you start seeing some of your famous actors that you really like or famous football players or basketball players that you you've liked for a long time being somehow connected or controlled by this entity uh, that that we would call the deep state or the cabal, mm -hmm. because there's going to come a lot more names and a lot more is going to come out. And do you think Tupac is still alive? Mm -hmm. um, that's a hard one because mm -hmm. i don't think so i think everybody wants tupac to be alive really bad i mean i do but um i don't know i do think that uh i do think that it was either diddy 
uh, that the diddler, put, the diddler that put the hit out on him, or it was him that did it himself. But I don't think so. I think he put the hit on Tupac because Tupac was was real mad after he got shot five times, and then he came up with that song. You mean and, when they tried to kill him the first time in yeah. the elevator? And then he came out with that song and was basically like, I'm coming for you. Mm-hmm. I think Diddy got scared and put out the hit. Mm. Sorry, I derailed. I derailed the conversation. I was just curious. This is what we do here. We this talk is- about all these things. <laughs> This is an, a normal evening. In the, this is the frenzy space. We never know where we're going to go. <laughs> no, we don't. So I would say things to look out for for the future is just uh, obviously keep watching the banks, right? We're seeing a lot of the banks are going down. The stock markets are continuing to go down. I wasn't kidding when I said that this stuff's coming, guys. It's not going away. If you're not paying attention to BRICS, all of these other countries that are basically saying we're not actually dealing with the dollar anymore, you guys should look that up, B-R-I-C-S, BRICS. Um, That's something to be paying attention to because more countries keep adding to that, and the more countries that add to that and say we're not going to use this dollar anymore – uh, the less valuable the dollar becomes and then it mm. crashes, right? And so it's inevitable. A lot of people are saying a lot of, and I'm not a financial advisor, but a lot of financial advisors that I listen to are saying that this is inevitable. It's just a matter of time. Now it's not, it's not an if, it's a win. So mm. if you guys have a lot of money in the bank or if you have investments and um, stock markets what and stuff like that. What if you don't have a lot of money in the bank? Then you're good. Yeah, just uh, can we? You're going to be just more, as broke as you were last time. Can we get more money in the bank? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. So another thing that I was curious to hear your thoughts on. Okay. This bridge collapse. Mm-hmm. I've seen a ton of videos. I don't. I I'm, I'm to the point now where. I don't even believe a lot of the videos that I see because of AI and all this other stuff, but Mm. it does not appear that this bridge collapse happened because a ship ran into the pylon. Yeah. What do you think? Well, for a couple of people that just got off of a series on false flags, um, this is terrible timing for a yeah. false flag to happen because we, because we ain't buying it. We ain't buying it, right? We've got <laughs> eyes to see and ears to hear now, and we're paying attention to everything that they say and do, mm-hmm. and they can't get away with it. I mean, you're seeing videos of, you know, the news, the news is showing you birds flying by the wreck and then the birds just like disappear, like it's CGI. And you're mm-hmm. like, wait a minute. What happened to the birds and why is it CGI? Why does it have to be CGI? Right. Why can't you just be filming it? So that's weird. Right. And then you've got all kinds of people saying, um, that's how a bridge collapses. If you're doing a controlled demolition of it, just like they said with nine 11, that's what a building looks like. Well, and here's the thing for me is I start to, when you have these like structural engineers and these guys that this is their job is mm-hmm. to to look at this kind of stuff and these guys are saying this looks like a controlled demolition i feel like we should listen to them because mm-hmm. these people were saying this when 9 11 happened they yeah. were like no this is there's no way that a, a plane hitting the top of this tower could have done this this was a controlled demolition like yeah. and nobody listened to them Nobody mm-hmm. listened to them back then. And then we look at it now and we're like, oh, gosh, it really does look like a controlled demolition, does it? And they're probably like, yeah, it sure does. Yeah, <laughs> I've been sure in the does. loony bin for the last 20 years because nobody would believe me. <laughs> you know, like these guys are saying this looks like the way you would you would take down a bridge if you were mm-hmm. going to decommission it. Yep. And the way that that boat, I mean... Th- you can see the boat in like, you know, slow motion or in the time lapse uh, video that a lot of people have shown. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very clearly driving directly at the bridge, uh, pylon or stand or right. whatever you and call it. Right. And like, it appears very purposely steering towards it. Yeah. 
Almost. And it, early on, a lot of people were speculating. They're like, oh, it lost power. And that's why it, you know, that's why it ran into it. But then the power came back on and it looked like they were trying to turn. And it's like, no, the power was going on and off. And that's one thing altogether. But the, they still right. have control of the steering I was of gonna the say, ship when the power so goes out. This isn't the first time in history that a ship has lost its electricity. I mean, that happens yeah. all the time. If you... I mean, I've watched Deadliest Catch. I I feel like I know the Bering Sea very well now. <laughs> they, they, they lose power all the time. Like, and yeah. it, you still have control of your vessel. Like, there are yeah. certain things that you lose your navigation or whatever. But I mean, if a guy is driving a a cargo ship of that size, don't you think he's probably looking out the window? Mm-hmm. And he probably knows he's in a harbor, and he probably knows that there's a bridge there. So if the power does go out and he loses some navigation, he still has eyes to look mm-hmm. out and be like, oh, we don't want to hit that, do we? Like, th- that part doesn't make any sense to me. And that's another thing. Was, you, there was no tugboat. There's supposed to be tugboats right. taking them in and out of harbor like that. They have certain protocols that they follow, and a tugboat's one of them. Another thing is horns. They're supposed mm-hmm. to be laying on the horns when they're getting anywhere near that bridge, and there was no horns um so it it was just really fishy at at first when we were kind of putting all those pieces together but then you realize the enormity of what they just did whoever Mm -hmm. did it the enormity of what just happened because that bridge separates so many uh ships from that and 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 that's like the number one of the top 10 in and out uh bays Mm -hmm. uh, well here's the thing that i saw it says two of the fastest U.S. sea lift ships trapped by Baltimore Bridge collapse. Mm-hmm. The blocked entrance to the port of Baltimore has stranded a total of four cargo ships that are on call to support U.S. military operations. Yeah. So if they're calling up the National Guard and they're doing all of this stuff to go back to the eclipse conversation, is this going to affect that? Yeah, it's hard to say because those ships can't get out and then Mm -mm. the other ships can't get in because not only did that bridge fall down, but it's still like in the water blocking everything. Mm -hmm. So you can't go past it. And then they said it took like five years to even build the thing. So not only is it down, but it's down for a while. It's not, I mean, it's building a bridge of that magnitude is not going to be quick, but Biden was very clear that the American taxpayers are going to pay for it. So that's good news. Was he very clear? He, well, was he kind of mumbly? He was mostly mumbly. Uh, and then he had to go and like waddle back into his own office. He opened his own door. Uh, there wasn't any military personnel or secret service there to open his door for him. Like you usually see uh, with a real president. But these are the small things that tell you that he's not the real guy. He's not the president, right? Because if you have a guy stumbling around by himself, that's not how the president usually walks around, right? He usually has an entourage everywhere Mm -hmm. he goes. He usually has people opening the door for him, ushering him from here to there. Like, it's usually a thing. And when you see this guy wandering around and opening his own door, that should clue you in that he's that's he's not do the real guy Something he's not the real right. president hmm. so should we get real conspiracy on people because know. i've been talking for a long time about this cleanup of the deep state right i believe that there's a cleanup going on of the deep state where you have all these bad actors out there that have been controlling our world for a very long time. And part of the process of cleaning that up is getting rid of the financial system that we con- that we currently know, the SWIFT system, which is run by the Fed, which we've talked about in the past, is not federal, nor is it a reserve. Um, right. it's, it's not part of the government at all. It's a private-owned business company ran by the Rothschilds. And so having there is a book by Laura Sanger that is that is very mm-hmm. interesting. That's called The Roots of the Federal Reserve. Yeah, and we need to like, get Laura on here. Yeah. Yeah. But so understanding that in order to get rid of this slave debt slave system that they've put us in, we have to 
-hmm. We have to purposely crash it. And that's scary for everybody because everybody's like, why would we crash the economy? How are we all going to live? How are we all going to survive? Well, if you do crash an economy, you also want to probably logistically have a backup plan or a plan B or something running alongside of it, right? So as mm -hmm. this program's running, this program is coming in and running. And so if you're changing over a software program at work or something like that, you're going to mirror it and it's going to be running at the same time for a while. And then you slowly out the old program and continue running the new program. And so I believe that that's what they're doing is they're tearing down this old system and they're bringing in this new system. Part of that is going to be financial, which we'll have an episode on in the future. Also, I think a lot of this stuff that's going on with infrastructure, like some of these bridges and because there's this bridge isn't the only bridge that's been hit or had things happen to it in the last couple of days. Um, you've had bridges that have had fires underneath them, other bridges that have been ran into. They haven't all collapsed, but there's been more. If you, if you get on the internet and do some searches, you'll find there's been several other um, bridges that have been affected too. So I think that they're doing a mass cleanup operation of satanic pedophile um, cult type people that are all throughout our government, Hollywood, our music industry, and all of that. And you're seeing that uh, in the forefront of your mind now in mainstream media, which as years ago, now you wouldn't have seen stuff like this, but now you're seeing it. P. Diddy's being grabbed up. They're talking about pedophilia. They're starting to make connections with him and Jay-Z. They're starting to make connections with Jay-Z and Obama, which is going to be very interesting. They're also making connections between Haiti and the Clinton Foundation. All of these connections are beginning to be made on mainstream media. And so when we've been talking about that for almost a year now, or over a year now, um, these are the things that are now coming out to the forefront of people's minds. So what do I think is happening during this eclipse? I don't think it's going to be crazy at all. I think uh, it's going to be all part of a wake-up campaign um, to continue to reveal to the public of the world that we are being saved from this satanic cabal. And the way that they tell us that is going to be very difficult for a lot of people to understand, right? What they're trying to avoid is mass uh, population unrest. Civil wars are not what we want, right? We, we want to wake up the American people. We want to wake up the world. We want to bring everybody back into community, but we also have to get rid of all these bad actors. And in that meantime, as they're flipping these switches between the financial systems and the new internets and the new way of life and the new energies and all these things that they're going to be doing in the future, you're going to see a lot of unrest for a little bit. Because people are going to be confused. They're going to wonder where all their money went. They're going to wonder why their internet doesn't work all of a sudden. They're going to wonder why we have a complete blackout of all of our electricity. And that's going to be scary. And they're going to probably try to blame all of that stuff on this eclipse and CERN mm. and the rockets and all of that stuff. But I don't think it's any of that stuff. I think they're dropping the power on purpose so that they can replace it. I think they're dropping the money system on purpose so that they can replace it. And I think that they're dropping out all of the internet on purpose so that they can replace it. And it's going to be very scary and choppy for a little bit. It's going to be super confusing for some people. But I think as we get closer and closer to this eclipse, we're going to find that the reality is that what we've been saying on this podcast for a long time is actually happening. And we're seeing more and more of that evidence as we move forward. And the more pieces that we put together over this last year, you guys should be seeing a full picture now of what's going on. And as, as confusing as it is, it's beginning to 
it's big the all of the puzzle pieces that we're all grasping for and coming from all different directions they're starting to come together and make a picture that's a little more clear um that there is something going on that guy that's in the white house is weird and that doesn't make any sense and why does he have obama following him around everywhere lately and what's obama doing meeting with people in foreign countries right now why isn't he just hanging out and retired what's going on what's obama worried about right now why is he going around talking to people where's jay-z and beyonce where'd they go where's tupac where's tupac that's what kristen wants to know so some things to think about guys <laughs> there's a lot i know there's a lot of heavy things that are going on in yeah. our world and i think the first reaction that everybody wants to make is fear and stress and anxiety and what's going to happen and and as an example when we talk about like the millennial reign already already coming and going the first reaction from people is fear like so jesus isn't coming back so what do we have to worry about? like what do we have to look forward to now if if the millennial kingdom already came where jesus go jesus wouldn't leave us after he came like all of this bundle of anxiety and worry comes mm -hmm. and people begin to freak out and that's not what we're supposed to be doing as christians we're supposed to be saying we're putting all of our faith and all of our hope in the fact that Jesus has done what he said he was going to do. He mm -hmm. came, he died on a cross, and he rose. All of those things he did. He also took the keys of sin and death from the enemy, and he has full control. And it is his opportunity to give back to all of us. And it says... Well, and logistically, so if the millennial reign did already happen... Mm -hmm that shouldn't be scary for people because it says in revelation that satan has to be loosed for for a short time whatever that means because we mm -hmm. also know that a year to us is not the same to god right mm -hmm. he's very clear on that so if satan is loosed and he is in charge right now like he he's prowling around and doing what he wants to do what so then what happens so if if that's already happened and we're in the time of satan being out and about going along his merry way what happens after that well jesus comes back again mm -hmm. and he creates a new heaven and a new earth so there's nothing if if that has happened and believe me i'm not completely sold on if this has happened or not I don't think any of us could be completely sold on it because we just don't know. But mm -hmm. if that is the case, then we should still have that sense of peace, knowing that he's coming back and creating a new heaven and a new earth, mm -hmm. that Satan's not going to be loosed forever. It's for a short time. So make sure that you don't let your... Because most of the time when people, when we get these comments from people like, oh, this is so ridiculous. We've been, you know, it's the second coming is what we've been waiting for. And, you know, nobody ever talks about the third coming. Like, what is that? Is that even a thing? And it, well, if you read it, mm -hmm. it does appear to be a thing. Mm -hmm. It's just that nobody talks about it. Yeah. So, and you have to ask yourself, why? Why? Right. Why have we not been talking? About, why does it say in Revelation 21, after Satan is thrown back? into the you know to the lake of fire and he's and he's and he's not a problem anymore and he's dealt with for good for good then then that's when he wipes away all tears right and all joy is restored to everybody and there is no need there's no more need for the sea or for the sun everything is going to be in harmony mm -hmm. and, and and jesus is going to be our all in all he's going to be enough for us and we're going to be enough for him and that is going to be the way that he designed it to be. So everybody mm -hmm. is so worried about this. And I'm like, what? but that's like the end end. That's like the good part. Right? right. Right. It's like watching a movie and stopping it, you know, 20 minutes before the end. You're not mm -hmm. going to do that. You're going to want to know what happens at the end. This yep. is not the end. Like, yeah. even if the millennial reign already happened, that that's not the end. Mm -hmm. There's, 
there's victory. Yeah. And we know who wins at the end. So regardless of whether the millennial reign has already happened or it's still to come, there is always hope in Jesus either mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. And you have to remember that, that where your faith lies is in the word of God and in Jesus. And it doesn't lie in being right or being wrong or having these fights with people. You know, you get on the Internet nowadays and everybody's just trying to and, and they're Christians Christians trying to fight Christians into being better Christians. And you're just like, guys, you're so upset about people talking. Like you're getting mad about people talking or, or believing something that you don't believe. And we need to get to the place where Jesus wants us to be, which is that we are accepting of all people. We don't allow them to stay where they are right we want to continue to teach them to grow to all of those things we accept them for the person not for the sin right love the love the sinner not the sin and i think when we start going off into the fringy weeds people get a little nervous because they're like oh my gosh you're gonna lead all these people to hell it's like that's not what's gonna happen like it's just not you, if or people, if that is what happens, it's not because of us. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's all the intent of the heart, right? Jesus is mm-hmm. judging the heart. And if, if, if your intent is to love God, then he's going to be good with you and you're going to be good with him. And if you're loving your neighbor as yourself and you're doing all those things that he asked you to do, honoring your father and mother and all that, you're, you're good with him. He's good with you. But if you're fighting on the internet, he doesn't like that. He don't like that. He just don't like that. He's your daddy and he's going to be like, kids, you better quit that fighting back there. He's don't make like, me take I'll off this, this flip flop. <laughs> All right. Well, well. anything else that you had that was a, a burning desire to talk about? I don't think so. I just wanted to do a couple of current events because I know people are getting super like frustrated that yes. this is and we a haven't, long time. We haven't done any fringy morsels for a while because life, life mm-hmm. has been busy and we just, we are going to implement the, them again, um, but we just haven't had time, honestly. It, yeah. They, these things take a lot more time and effort and energy than I think a lot of people realize. Mm-hmm. So we just haven't had time. But we do, we did want to bring up a few of these current events that are happening right now because there is, we get a ton of questions from people and there's a lot of people that are legitimately very concerned about all of this stuff. So... Mm-hmm to get on we wanted to address the millennial reign piece Mm -hmm. because people be people be up in arms about it uh some people very supportive i mean it's the same same that we get on every episode there's always people that don't agree with with some of the stuff that we put out or you know some people that feel the need to comment and tell us that we mispronounced something you know at (laughs) 10 minutes and two seconds into our episode or whatever and those kind of that's fine you know those those kind of people are there and we love them anyway, but we did want to address the millennial reign piece and just say, you don't know if it's happened or not. Yeah. <laughs> just the same as we don't know if it's happened or not. Yeah, but it doesn't, we're not going to hell because we're speculating on whether it's happened or not. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Same thing as we're not going to hell if we celebrate Easter. And, you know, it's it's all this like extreme one way or the other Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be an extreme one way or the other we can just meet in the middle and we can just say okay you believe what you want to believe you read your scripture and you're getting revealed things by god and i'm getting revealed things by god also Mm -hmm. and that's okay that's what makes us we're all part of the body but we're not all the same body part yeah so uh, if i'm hands and your feet that's fine. We don't have the same function. We don't have the same job. We don't do the same thing, but we're part of the same body. So mm-hmm. it doesn't do us any good to chop off the foot when it's working perfectly fine just because we don't like what it's doing. Yeah. 
So keep that in mind when all of this fringy stuff is, is getting talked about because it it's, we live in a day and age where people like you have to pick a side, mm-hmm. you know, you're either this or you're that you're either red or you're blue. You're either, you know, whatever pro this pro that like it, it yeah. it's, it, it's all silly to me, honestly, like we're all part of the same body and we can all be doing different things to glorify God in, in whatever way he's revealed them to us. As long as we are legitimately believing in God and seeking the truth for ourselves, then I don't see how we could be wrong. Yeah. And remember, you know, Jesus is for us. He wants us mm-hmm. to get this stuff figured out. He mm-hmm. wants us. He doesn't like that we're being deceived, but he, but it is part of the plan. It's mm-hmm. very clear that it's part of the plan for us to be deceived at some point and if or you, another. And if you look throughout scripture, God is, is much more harsh on the deceivers, not the deceived. So mm-hmm. we, we have to remember that we, we don't know if the, earth is flat or if it's a globe but it doesn't really matter which way we believe it doesn't really matter because he's not going to be mad at us if we believe the earth is flat he's not going to be mad at us if we believe the earth is a globe you know who he's going to be mad at whoever told us the wrong thing Mm -hmm. so keep that in mind yeah all right. Well, this has been fun being able to just catch up with you guys and get some of these things out there that you might have had some questions about. If you do have questions, we're always open to them. And and we love to do stuff like this where we get to interact and, and maybe answer some of the stuff that we know you guys are wondering about. So hopefully we cleared some things up and didn't actually confuse you more. Um, but it's yeah. definitely a possibility. You never know. So we're going to get out of here for this one. We hope you guys have a wonderful resurrection day. We know that Jesus is alive. He is uh, alive and well. He's he's doing everything, advocating for you at the right hand of the Father like he always has been. And uh, there's no need to worry. Uh, put your faith in him and, uh, and, and he will, you know, mention you. When the day comes to his father, he'll be like, yeah, I know he'll, that guy. He'll give I know you that guy. Out. He's pretty cool. Yeah. He, is he, he, he going to retweet? Is he going to retweet? He him? might retweet him and say, yeah, he can come in. Yeah. All right, you guys, this has been <laughs> a long, fringy morsel, but we're glad that you guys were here on this special Resurrection Day. Have a yes. great rest of your day. Uh, if you got eggs to open, do it. If you got uh, bunnies to hug and snuggle, do it. If you, if that Wait, offends you. Wait, I don't have you, a bunny. If Where that do we offends get a bunny? you, by all means, don't do any of it. Don't do any of it. Do, don't do any you of do it. You do you, boo. You do you, boo. And and <laughs> you love Jesus all the yes. same. All right, you guys. Have fun. And uh, don't do anything we wouldn't do. <laughs> uh...